Okay, thank you for attending this meeting. I'm from the Open Technology Assembly, which is a non-profit organization, and our president is also in the room here. So the topic of this talk will be the open source support program that we will be announcing today. So the mission is, as you can read, is to support open source software and any kind of open source solution project. It doesn't have to be software only, it can also be hardware. Before we go into details uh, on what we will do and how we will do it, uh, how we would like you to do it, is talk a bit about the open source uh, and the Open Technology Assembly nonprofit organization, which we are, where did we came from? We came from the Belgian Unix Users Group, and it was founded in the last century in 87. So a very long time ago, uh, as you can see on my gray hair, uh, <laughs> go a long time already in that organization. Um, I think one of the most uh, points that we realized in, uh, in Belgium at least, is uh, that we started the internet. That was uh, together with the University of Leuven. Uh, and then, Further on, it went into UNET. It was an, uh, a profit organization for a commercial organization afterwards. It was a bit sold. And from that, we got a lot of money effect by doing that. But Belgian Unix Users Group did more than internet only. We also promoted uh, the Unixes uh, in the last century. Uh, like says, SunOS, uh, Solaris afterwards, HPX, uh, Ultrix, all the Unixes that were around. And there were all different flavors, and we held meetings, conferences, to meet people, to organize uh, a lot of uh, talks about it. And one of the uh, steps that we did afterwards was, in fact, to promote open source software, something was created called Linux. It was in 91, and we jumped on that wagon very early to organize Linux meetings and to promote it, in fact, and also promoting the open source. You can see it in this diagram. This is a bit the history of the Belgian Units Group and the Open Technology Assembly, as you can see, founded in 87. And from 92 to 2003, we did a lot of Linux SIG meetings, uh, special interest group meetings. And uh, that was typically on a Saturday morning, a uh, couple of hours that we did a lot of uh, talk about topics which were very brand new, uh, sent mail, uh, all these kind of topics that were very hot in the beginning of the 90s, uh, by way of speaking. It's a very long time ago already, but okay. Um, and another thing was, because as you know, internet now, we have a, a very big pipeline to download everything what you like in a few seconds, by way of speaking. But back in the beginning of the 90s, that was not the case. Uh, the internet was just starting up and I still remember that I used the internet with an, an X25 modem. Does somebody still know the protocol X25? Okay, still one. <laughs> Very good. So as you see, internet evolved a lot. But at that time, yeah, the, the pipelines were not there and we delivered, in fact, the Linux system on CD-ROMs. It was a big hit, in fact, because it was very loved by the people and by the members of the Belgian Unit Users Group and afterwards the Open Technology Assembly. That's passed away in 98. I think that was the last time that we uh, created the cd rounds because at that time the internet got more and more uh, used and also the download was, uh, it was less needed effect. In 96, also, we renamed the Belgian Unix Users Group to the Open Technology Assembly and because we were more and more going towards the open source and to promote open source projects and stuff like that and also the meetings and the conferences that we did at that time. Were, and we thought the Open Technology Assembly is a good name. Well, time will learn. But of course, in the 20, well, afterwards, like, like say, let, uh, beginning the 2000s, 2010, uh, there was less interest in conferences uh, around Linux because yeah, the internet was, yeah, everything was there. Huh? You could just download, find everything. So we did not do any conferences anymore. 
And it was all just last year that we decided, yeah, we have still money left from the old times, from the internet effect that we started up. I said, let's do something with it and fund open source projects. And so, and that is the goal of this talk effect. So now you know the history a bit, where we came from. That's uh, one of the uh, pictures that I just took about the uh, seed realms that we uh, created. Uh, it was, uh, I think the best seed realm, there were two seed realms that were very uh, lovely. There's one that contained the, the uh, Museum of the Web Louvre. It was a kind of contest that I did with the guys from the Louvre itself. They said, okay, if you can copy it on a CD, it's, it's okay, and we did it. I took a lot of time for it, and uh, I wrote a kind of lint program to, to find all the uh, interlinks that were working on the CD-ROM. Uh, so you could just browse the CD-ROM through the complete Louvre. Uh, that was one of the CD-ROMs effect. It was a fun project. And another one was the Linux 95, which came out before Windows 95, by the way. Uh, that's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, that's, that's big history, but well, still have the CD-ROMs. So what's next? Then? Because you are now here for the uh, next topic effect. It's the open source uh, support program. Okay, what is the goal? The goal is, as you can read on the left side, uh, is that we would like to sponsor people and projects around open source. It can be hardware, can be software, can be even conferences uh, or lectures like that, and even pay for hosting. That's also a possibility. If you say we have a project but I don't have the money to host something, okay, we can uh, provide you with a, a, a cost for that. If you want to do some hardware prototyping, that's also a possibility. Um, and what we already did since last year is we uh, sponsored conferences. Uh, FOSDEM is not sponsored by us, but Tomorrow, there is a conference in Ghent, the uh, Confi Configuration Management Camp. We are one of the sponsors. And we did uh, last year also uh, some other little conferences around Linux and open source in general, in fact. So it should be community-based, that's clear. Huh? It's, it's not, we don't, will not sponsor any, anything about closed software. Uh, it should be open source. And if you create something, fine. We would love to sponsor you about it. But it would be even nicer that, for example, next year, you give a lightning talk about it here. Well, why not? So that we can at least see, okay, somebody did something useful with it, and then we are very glad to, uh, to be part of that. So everything that we give away now should return to the community. So that's uh, one of the fundamental ideas. Important, we will never pay for people. We will not pay labor hours. We will not pay you for any, following any training, of course, uh, of education. And commercial programs are out of the question. Okay. That's the fundamental ideas. And this is the most important URL for uh, your uh, submitting your proposals. The, uh, we have a special website uh, that will be uh, published right now. It is published, uh, Jan says me. So if you have a proposal, this is the place to be. You can submit it. And this is the process. And there, there are two things that we would like to find. We would like to find members, members to, to be a jury, uh, to, uh, to guide people who submit something, uh, to say, okay, uh, this is okay, this is not okay, you should go in that direction. And then it should be an open community as such. This, if you submit something, a proposal, uh, it should be open and in the clear why it is accepted, why is it not accepted, for example, what is missing, and stuff like that. So we need two, twofold people. We need projects, of course, and we need also people who act together with us as a jury. That's also interesting, I would say. But the process is the same. You just submit a proposal, an issue at GitHub, and somebody from the other members will own the issue, and then it is an open discussion. And well, at the board meetings, probably we will decide uh, how we will do the funding and stuff like that. So we're just starting up, so don't expect that we can give you all the answers today, but we are working on it. And one of the things is, I will show you the uh, website, should be online. 
Uh, let's refresh it. And here is the website. It was just released by Jan, our president. And you can just see here, if you scroll by, what the bit of the history is there, where we came from. The cd ROMs history is there. Um, well, it's just the initial start of the, uh, the website. Uh, more to follow, of course. But the most important thing is, of, is um, the funding, uh, the uh, OTA. Let's see. Here is the proposals. If you have something, you can submit it over there. And from there, we can start. I think, in general, I've discussed everything what's required for this talk. I uh, still have some time left for questions. If there are any questions, please come forward. I will try to answer it. Any questions? In the back is the one. Thanks, uh, great initiative. On the website it says uh, only for Belgian not-for-profit organizations. Also the funding of hosting, I mean that might limit the scope a bit. Yeah, initially we, we were thinking about sponsoring effect uh, the Belgian community. Um, but we are still not 100% sure if it's the direction we'll, we will be going, if there is enough interest or not enough interest, let's say that, in Belgium. For projects, we can take it outside Belgium, of course. Uh, but it is a bit um, a Belgium organization, that's true. And we would like to see a lot of Belgian projects. But yeah, everything is open for discussion, of course. If you have an idea, you can submit it. Huh? OK. Any other questions? No? I would say if you have something. You can always ask the questions towards us as an issue or send the mail afterwards. Okay, I have still time left, so if there's no... Ah, still about one question, probably. Uh, hi. Um, I think it's a very nice uh, initiative. I just was wondering, I, I couldn't get uh, all the, the list. Um, are you planning on sponsoring um, educational events or initiatives like um, the, um, how is it called, the, the Mentally Code Initiative uh, or the 100 Hours of Code or something like that? that um, I think it's sponsored by the European Union. Mm -hmm. or some things of this for uh, young people? Well, what we said in the previous slide was that we would not sponsor education as such for your personal reasons. Uh, we, we can support educational programs if it's for a group, uh, let's say, like a kind of talk, uh, something like that, but not an, if you say I want to follow in a in Java course, for example, no, that's nothing. Something that uh, you have to come for us to. But you say, I want to like to, to give an, a training in a conference. Yes, that's a possibility. Okay, I hope that's a bit clear. Yeah. Any other questions? We still have one minute left, so it is your chance. If not, then we thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.